Hi, so uh, for chemistry uh, fundamentals and chemistry 101, uh, we need to talk about specific heat capacity and the relationship between energy, mass, and temperature. So first of all, just for a review, I want you to remember uh, the term joules. And joules, uh, marked by a capital A, that's just a measurement of energy. Just like if we were to say that we weigh so much pounds, pounds would be a unit of measurement measuring our weight. So joules is a unit of measurement measuring the amount of energy it takes to do something. So you're going to see joules a lot when you're working with heat stuff in chemistry class, but joules is not limited to just uh, heat calculations. It's used as a measure of a whole bunch of different energies. Just if it has energy in it, then joules is one of the measurements we use for it. Now, triangle T. Triangle T, you should get used to seeing triangle in front of the letters because, so this means a triangle ch temperature. The triangle itself is called delta um, because that's the Greek letter for delta is triangle. And it just means change, the change in something. So the difference between the beginning amount and the final amount the change in something. So if we're talking about temperature, then delta temp temperature, delta T or triangle T, just means a change in temperature. So it's gonna be the end ending amount minus the beginning amount. So if over here uh, it is 95 degrees and it started out over here in the old section that started out in the morning 75 degrees then you would just take the 95 degrees minus 75 degrees and the change is 20 degrees so in the morning it was 75 degrees and then say at noon it was 95 degrees so the change in temperature, the delta T, between morning and noon was 20 degrees. Now the specific heat capacity, that is how many, how much energy, and we remember we measure energy in joules, so how much energy does it take to raise the temperature of something one degree and this is just one gram of something so one gram say like one gram of I don't know sand because sand's small one gram of sand say it's sitting there in the heat on the beach and the sun shining on it and all this energy gets onto it and then it raises its temperature and it raises its temperature one degree celsius so how much energy and in this case it would be the energy from the sun uh, shining down on the sand how much energy did that take so that's what we hope to answer with the specific heat capacity formula and specific heat capacity, by the way, is just, it's a lowercase c. Don't do it a capital C, uh, that's the speed of light, or obviously a degree C would be Celsius, but a lowercase c is the specific heat capacity. And here is the formula for the specific heat capacity. See this lowercase c right here? The specific heat capacity equals joules. So it's going to be how many joules of energy, and let me change this uh, color right here. This is energy, joules is energy. So how many, or how much energy 
do they use to take one gram of a substance and raise the temperature one degree Celsius? So the only thing that changes when we do C is going to be the number of joules. And then that's just going to be per gram times degree Celsius. Just like if you were to say miles per hour, like if you say you're going driving 60 miles per hour, that's the same thing as saying you're going 60 miles over one hour. So this is the same thing. This is going to be some number of joules and one over one gram times one Celsius. So one gram of something increases its temperature, it gets a fever by one degree Celsius. So how much energy, how many joules does that take? and that's going to give you the specific heat capacity. So what if there's more than one gram of the whatever we're talking about? So that's our first question. So if we have the specific heat capacity of something and that's how many, and we're just gonna put a question mark here because it just depends, how many joules per one gram times one degree Celsius. Well, what if there's more than one gram of it? Well, then we're just gonna multiply that many grams by this. So if it's gonna be like five grams, so one gram, we're gonna multiply it times five grams. Now, what's the second question? What if you were to raise the temperature more than just one degree Celsius? So we have Say we have two joules and there's only one gram of sand. We're just going to go back to the sand and say there's one gram. But there's more than just one degree Celsius. But see this formula, the specific heat capacity, lowercase c, this is only for if on the bottom part of the fraction if you just have one gram times one degree Celsius. So let's say you have five degrees Celsius instead. It raised the temperature of the sand five whole degrees. So you're just gonna take that times five. So that'd be 10. But when we do this, it's important to understand when we do this, this is no longer the specific heat capacity because it's not over one gram by one Celsius. It's not called the specific heat capacity. We changed the name of it. So we're going to call it Q for right now. It's not showing up. There we go. We're going to call it Q. And that's going to be how much energy is put into or gotten out of something. And it takes into account how many grams there actually is of something and what the actual temperature raised and it was actually raised and you'll see more about that in just one minute so here we go here's that formula and see the q is going to be the energy that he just used up in the reaction and it's going to be measured in joules because remember joules is just a measurement of energy. So Q is going to equal mass and mass is in grams multiplied by lowercase c so that's the specific heat which we were just talking about so that's some number of joules over one gram times one degree Celsius and then times delta T change in temperature. So here's the question. Suppose it took 108 joules of energy to raise a bar of gold from 25 degrees Celsius to 29.7 degrees Celsius. Given that the specific heat capacity of gold 
is 0 0.128 and there's joules per 1 gram times 1 degree Celsius. It's right here, right up here, the specific heat capacity, that lowercase c we were talking about. So the question is, what is the mass in grams of the bar of gold? So remember, we have this Q equals mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. And Q is going to be the energy of the reaction. So what's the reaction here? The reaction is raising the energy of a bar of gold. Okay, so the reaction is raising the temperature of a bar of gold, of gold from 25 degrees Celsius to 29.7 degrees Celsius. Now, how much gold is this that we're dealing with? We don't know because that's the question. What is the mass in grams? So, the energy of the reaction, the Q, is what? The energy of the reaction is that it, that it took 108 joules. That's the energy. So, 108 joules. And it raised energy to raise a bar of gold from, raise the temperature from 25.0 degrees Celsius to 29.7 degrees Celsius. So the change in temperature is we're going to have to subtract those to find the difference. So 29.7 minus 25.0 degrees Celsius equals 4.7 degrees Celsius. So the change in temperature that delta T we're talking about is 4.7. The mass, the M of this equation, we don't know. That was what the question is. And then uh, the specific heat capacity, that lowercase c, it tells us in the problem the specific heat capacity of gold is 0 0.128 joules for every one gram at one degree Celsius. So there we go. Now we just need to multiply all of these out. We need to multiply the, the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature in order to get Q, or the, uh, the amount of energy that was needed for that whole reaction. But we already have Q, right? So actually, we have this. We don't need, the, we're not solving for Q. So we know 108 joules, that's Q, equals, we don't know how many grams times the specific heat capacity times change in temperature. So we have, we know we have Q, which is 108 joules. So and then equals, the mass is what we're trying to figure out, and that's how many grams, because mass, we measure mass in grams. That's kind of like pounds, when we measure how much we weigh, we say it in pounds. Well, when we're talking about mass, we usually say in grams. So just go ahead and get in the habit of doing mass in grams. So question mark grams, we don't know. Times the specific heat, that lowercase c, which is 0 0.128 joules over 1 gram times 1 degree Celsius. And then we take it times the change in temperature, and that's 4.7 degrees Celsius. Now, uh, that's from here, 
and then this 0.12 is from here, the specific capacity. Now, before we do any calculations, first let's cancel out what we can of the units of measurement. So over here for the mass, we have this mass in grams, but then next to it, we're multiplying it by something that's over grams and we have this 0.128 joules over grams times Celsius. So we can go ahead and cross out the term gram to cancel out this unit of measurement. Now, not the numbers, just the unit of measurement itself. Also, over here for uh, the change in temperature is 4.7 degrees Celsius. We have a Celsius right here. But also on the bottom of this fraction bar for the specific heat, we have a Celsius down here. So we can cross these out and cancel those out. So now we have a very pretty 108 joules equals question mark times 0 0.128 joules times 4.7. So now we can go ahead and multiply these 0 0.128 and 4.7, which is 0 0.6016. And that would we would carry the joules because see there's joules up there, so we want to keep carrying the units of measurement with us that weren't canceled out. So there's joules. And we still have this question mark times this amount, and we still have this 108 joules over here on the other side of the equal sign. So what can we do mathematically to uh, solve this equation? Well, we have to divide both sides by the 0 0.6016 joules. in order to get this to cancel out. So that cancels out. And so now over here, we have 108 joules divided by 0 0.6016 joules. So that is going to equal 179.52128. So these joules have canceled out. So I'm not going to say 179.52128 joules because those joules cancel out now. But what we have left over, 179.52128. So we just got to round it down to sig figs. It, you don't count temperature in sig figs. Uh, so you just leave temperature alone. So it looks like we have three sig figs to round this down to. So that would equal uh, 180. So 180 grams would be the amount of uh, gold that would be there if 108 joules of energy raise the temperature from 25 to 29.7. Uh, if there's 180 grams of gold there, that's what would happen.